So uh, I'm now going to invite uh, Shel Tusky to come and speak. He's been a leader in the community and a leader in the struggle, and he will explain uh, in a little more detail than I have uh, what uh, what the situation is in that community and what we can do as allies to support it. Further. So, uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share our struggle and try to preserve our ancestors' knowledge to sustain our identity, which has passed on to us as elders, and to be able to transfer this knowledge to our younger people, our children and grandchildren. So, I'd like to give you a brief uh, history of our struggle. Since 1991, we have entered into an agreement with the, the federal, provincial, to develop a model that could help other communities to protect their way of life, their interests. And then under the Stralado process, we were developing or uh, gathering uh, information, data collections, and then uh, the second phase was to to assess the, the existing uh, laws, including our uh, customary law of, uh, of our community. And the third phase was to to negotiate the implementation of those uh, integrated resource management within our traditional territory. So this did not happen. Despite the fact that the federal and provincial government were submitted a recommendation from the uh, representative, special representative on the Stralado, we jointly made a recommendation to the signatories to negotiate the implementation of that, that integrated resource management in our territory, which includes the co-management and resource revenue sharing within our traditional territory. That didn't happen, and uh, for now we've been struggling and waiting for those uh, go uh, governments to, to sit down with our community since 2006, which is now six years ago. And this waiting time has resulted into the different uh, leadership, different customary leadership, including the imposition of a Section 74 Council that took place in 2010 and 2012, recently last August. 
So, the community's position was to protect those uh, areas, to have a say in how the, the land is managed within the territory, as well as uh, the benefit from those uh, resources uh, extraction, which is approximately estimated at $100 million annually. The community does not benefit any, any of that. So the struggle, you know, despite the community wishes to, to enter into a negotiation to the federal and the provincial government, the provincial government showed a forestry company kept extracting the resources, the forest, from 2007 without consulting the community or having an input and in how to, to extract the resources, the forest. And this has caused a hardship within our community. Many of them were arrested, including myself. And some of them are here and were also taken into they were taken to a jail. But one thing we have always uh, never forgot it's our language. Because our language, you know, that's what we have left. And in order to to preserve our language, the forest has to be there for us to be able to teach our children and transfer those knowledge, traditional knowledge, including the harvesting that we have preserved from our ancestors. We have preserved several of our place names. We have also identified several significant sites, historic sites, sacred sites, including the ceremonial and orphan sites. Now the company has you know, cut some of those areas, destroyed some of those areas, which has a serious impact in our identity. Because not having your language, you know, it's pretty hard to, to know your identity. A nation without a land base is not a nation. Including a nation without its language, it's pretty hard to, to survive. So this is what we struggle for, to protect what's, what is left for a community to, to survive. We've been currently using the, the 10,000 square kilometers to our memory collection. It would have been so much easier for us to tell the government we use this land. And if they want, if they want us to prove it, let's do the archaeology research on these areas. Then that would have impacted the three regions that are benefiting from our resources. The Ottawa region, the Loranchi and the Abitibiti Miskami, including Hydro Quebec, who are benefiting from the, our water. They have two spillways within our, our territory at the Kabonga Reservoir. There's one south that's leading to the Jean de Terre, providing 
the cities that are down below, as well as the, the northern part of the, the west part of the, the Kabonga, which flows through the Ottawa River down to the to here, Ottawa. To provide electricity, to provide water to, to people that are living down below. It would have been so too easy for us to tell the government, don't play with the water level of the Kabanga Reservoir. Because we have artifacts all around the Kabanga Reservoir. Until we complete our archaeology research, then we couldn't see it's a down. But that's not the route that we took. We took the route of coexistence. And yet, the federal government and the provincial government does not want to listen to us. And these are the things that our community are facing. with. The regions that are benefiting from our resources really has a tremendous impact on our identity. Recently, they have issued the current payment with a necessary that our community harvesters are impacted. As a result of other community members that their area have been cut without their input or their mostly are being totally destroyed or cut. So this has increased the numbers of harvesters within an area that is before the courts now, the Superior Court, because and the forestry company, Rizidu, has filed an injunction against community members, which they have modified their injunction by including the whole community in August 6 of this year. This has limited community members to go on the land on a forestry site operation to identify areas that are of concern because of the injunction. It has limited their capacity to, to identify those areas. Although we have knowledge of the areas of significant sites, which include sacred sites, historic sites, it was at the hand at the mercy of uh, the forestry company, who also have an injunction against us, the whole community, who, who use that land for time and memorial. So we did try to attempt to fight the injunction or try to preserve the, the historic and sacred site that has been passed on by our ancestors. And then on August, September recently, we went on a Sunday to assess the damage and they cut within the sacred site as well as the historic site which was very painful to our community members that witnessed the destruction of those sites. A part of our 
history was destroyed. We have attempted to, to file an injunction to stop the logging operation within that area. Allow the community to clearly identify those areas that have been destroyed. Sacred sites, significant sites to them. 
to our people will no longer be there. So this is the, the, the pain that we, we are going through. As a result of the, the provincial government to provide food for their people, but not for us. Not for us to preserve our identity, language. Our Kikagan, because Kikagan, for us in our language, it means spiritual, emotional, and physical support system. <coughs> That's what helped me overcome painful process that I went through in a residential school. Being connected to the land, that's what keeps the language alive. Now, These experiences, our youth, the younger generation, will not be able to, to have the same opportunity as us who are so well at the residential schools. because of the, the provincial government total ignorance of our people. They don't want to even have a, a moment of reflection that our ancestor raised their great-great-grandparents. It's our ancestors that raised those people. Now they're destroying us by not showing any respect. By the way they, they treated us. It's just like asking you, asking you <coughs> to give away your child. I put that child to learn another culture. one part of the, our struggle. Now the forestry company, Rizalu, has an injunction on us. And our injunction against them to stop them on an interim basis until we identify we lost that case and the decision came down yesterday. Now this afternoon, after speaking to our elected new council, they were told that by email coming in to cut another area which they are not required to consult our leadership 
or community members as a result of this decision that was handed down yesterday. They don't need to consult us anymore because they apparently have all the information that they, they need to fulfill their obligation of consulting our community members. That's their... So that, that's what they're telling us. So even though if we try to, to stop logging in those other areas, that the injunction will be imposed on us. Once we disrupt or intimidate <coughs> the forest worker, we're going to be charged in contempt with contempt with court and then be jailed for two to five years. That's why we are faced with in regards to the forest operation. The other thing too we are faced with is the mining issues. We just received a call just last Thursday. The mining company, Copper One Mining Company. Asking for a meeting. So those are the, the big challenges that we have in front of us. These mining projects will be devastating for a generation. They will have no forests, no significant sites to get their strength. It's going to be buried by the mining company once they start drilling or excavating for the minerals. And our community doesn't have any resources to, to take legal challenges against these these forestry people. Our environment will be the first one to be impacted. And then us as people. And eventually your children will be impacted. It's going to fall down downstream. So, so this is what uh, we are faced with now. Because the priority of the provincial government. provide food for their own people, but not the people who raised them. Not to take into account of our ancestors that helped them to be who they are now as a distinct society. So, you have any questions? Uh,
The only knowledge I have is forest product, uh, forest company uh, resolute have signed um, a forest contract agreement with the Ministry of Natural Resources in 2004. That's the only, you know, other than that, I'm not aware of how they, uh, according to the court documents that they filed uh, regarding this injunction, they claim that the area that they are cutting within the area or territory, that's the only area that they have, you know, they could do forestry exploitation. Other than that, there's no other wood, lumber supply for the for their mill. So that's what they're claiming in the, in the courts. So they're trying to harvest all the, the forest that is remaining within the origin.
there's no um, provincial or federal support at all. So if I get the energy to I wanted to mention is that uh, we are planning to, uh, to come in to the to cut with an oil and territory in 13 different areas. So it's a pretty, I guess it's a full swing on our part because now they have uh, a green light to come in without proper consultation with, <coughs> with our community members. And uh, despite the fact that the Supreme Court uh, of Canada has issued uh, on the Haida case to do a consultation and accommodation to, uh, to the First Nation people. So that's where we are now in regards of that consultation. Jacob will uh, speak uh, 